Hello. Thank you for watching. <clears throat> Have you ever heard somebody make a true statement and then act like whatever they say next is also true? Here's some times when I've heard that said. Joseph Smith or Brigham Young, one of them, said, We accept all truth. We, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, are willing to accept all truth. We believe all truth. Um, even if that truth has been taught by another religion, if it's true, we believe it. And we accept all truth. Some members of my church have quoted that quote and then cited things that aren't true, that haven't been proven, and, like, demand I believe something just because they made that, they quoted that quote. If you want to hold two religions at the same time, the, the religion of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and evolutionism, be my guest. But don't demand me accept your second religion that you're trying to hang on to as you are a dual religion person with that quote. Um, a good application of that quote, instead of accepting that there is one common ancestor to all life, or accepting um, white supremacy, that blacks are half ape, and there was not a literal Adam and Eve, but um, <clears throat> that at some point, with God not making things, then there was this first man that got... <clears throat> a good application of this principle is we'll pay attention to scientific discoveries and believe actual discoveries. Scientists telling us stories about billions of years ago, making up uh, stories about things giving birth to something different than itself, um, things getting better over time when we do not see that, it's not an example of truth. Hello? Wow. It's not an important message regarding my current credit card account. It's a lousy telemarketer. Um, other good examples of applying this principle is C.S. Lewis never joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in his lifetime. But he has a lot of really good ways to explain really things are actually true. So we should accept the truths he taught and explained and not say, he wasn't one of us, we're not going to believe that. Um, some of the people that wrote things in the early days of the apostasy of the church Jesus Christ founded when he was on the earth. It would be a good application of this principle if you see something that one of them wrote and it was true to believe it and accept the truth and not to bigotedly say, Oh, it's a Catholic. It can't be true. Um, maybe there's a Catholic Pope that had a good way to explain something. Um, it doesn't mean you're joining the Catholic Church if you say, Pope so-and-so in this encyclical end a year... 1900 something, 1800 something, 1700 something. That's a good point. That's a good use of that principle, not demanding me believe everything that falls after. Okay, um, true religion and true science aren't in conflict or at war with each other. That is a true principle. Some people I've heard say that, and then next they either quote untrue religion or untrue science, false science or false religion, and expect me to believe it, or try to demand, you know, smush false science into true religion, or try to get true religion to bend to false science. Um, I've heard people describe the scientific method accurately. Um, describing the scientific method accurately does not prove whatever you say next is true, especially if whatever you describe next it does not follow the scientific method, or is not known, or knowable, or testable with the scientific method. Um, we have progress because of science. This is an ad. This is a, uh, a straw man attack, too. 
just because we have wonderful technology and cars and doctors know how to fix a lot of things they didn't know how to fix a few hundred years ago and a few thousand years ago. <clears throat> and cell phones and the internet does not have anything to do with some other things. But some people cite those true facts and then demand you believe something or claim they've proven something that they did not prove. Billions of years ago, we know where all the stars were. No, you don't. You see, you did not come to that conclusion by the scientific method of putting a star there and seeing what happens to it. And then putting a star there and seeing what happens to it and saying, Hey, it does this. <laughs> um, or all life having a common ancestor. No genetic mutations have been found that created a whole viable uh, functioning body parts and systems. And that would be needed. If you can get that to happen, then I will say that the LUCA is a plausible explanation. LUCA being last or least universal common ancestor. Um, but You've got a case that it could happen. Right now, you don't even have a case that could happen. So just because the cell phones are amazing and wonderful, you are you're being stupid. Um, you're not being logical if you claim, well, because of that, then I have to believe what you say about how a dinosaur bone ended up buried in the ground. No, I don't. You didn't prove how that dinosaur got there by saying we have cell phones. And yet, that how that dinosaur got there, you did not use the scientific method to find it. All right, Christianity is true. So, all right, um, I am a Christian. Christianity is true. That does not mean all Christians are. Okay, giving you the right explanation. There is some variety in Christianity. Now, in, among all of those different groups worthy to be called Christian, there is Jesus Christ's actual true church that he leads, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, but I will never say that it has been scientifically proven um, it's, it's true, but it hasn't been proven like to the same degree that a jury should demand a prosecutor prove somebody guilty. It's never been disproven. <laughs> um, we're not like going against the evidence um, and being Christians and going with something that's been disproven and uh, I'm having a cognitive dissonance. But some Christians, we've got some good evidence. We do have good evidence of good reasons. Point to very good evidence that Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected. Yes, that's true. He was crucified and resurrected. We have good evidence and or reasons to believe that that really happened. But that does not prove everything you say about everything. Because Jesus Christ was probably, he definitely was, but we've got you know, some pretty good evidence. We've got zero evidence against it. We've got good evidence and reason to believe Jesus was really alive, really got crucified, and really came back to life. That does not mean you are right about your cosmology. That does not mean you are right about how to be saved. That does not mean you are right about a lot of other stuff. <laughs> And so, there you go. There's another example of people saying a true statement. Um, so both, sometimes they oversell how strong the evidence is. Um, I wonder if those Christians have cut out the page in their Bible where Paul says we walk by faith. Because they are not walking by faith if they are Christians because it has been absolutely proven with the same certainty and level of proof that a juror should demand of a prosecutor. Um, God is love is in the scriptures. You chanting that truth, quoting that truth, does not prove that whatever comes next is you correctly applying that principle. Some people have 
said God is love and then demand I encourage people to commit sins that will end them up in hell. Commit sins that will end them up in the worst of the degrees of glory. End them up with an eternity of regret and likely getting um, harmful, sometimes deadly, sometimes just embarrassing uh, um, diseases in this life. No, you saying the truth, God is love, does not prove that I need to do whatever those things are that you said. And it doesn't prove that a politician, that's bad proof of a politician being a bad politician. God is love, so you must hate this one politician. Wait, what? those are two different things. God is love, so you must believe all the lies told about this one politician who never, for 60 or 70 years, um, got accused of being racist, um, you know, had praises heaped on him by people who were worried about racial injustice, and then suddenly... No. Alright, so thank you for watching this video where I go through examples of when somebody has said a true statement or fact or principle and then acted like them stating that one truth proves whatever they say next after it is true. And it doesn't. So, have a good day.